Here's the plan. We get the warhead and we hold the world ransom for one million dollars. One million dollars. What's up, Cinemaniacs? We are back, and we are back with a Cinebrief, and that is Cinebrief number five. Cinebrief number five. And what is Cinebrief? Well, Cinebrief is a show where movie lovers get together and talk movies, like our Cine Talk show. It's just a more informal show, and we do this kind of at our own desks, and we, I'll Skype my, uh, my buddy Brian in, um, and uh, instead of being at the studio, this is what we do. So what's up, Brian? How's it going? It's going well. Yeah. I'm fired up for a good show today. Yes. We have a lot there of some, topics. There because are some interesting segments. We have a lot of topics today, and one of the... One of the things that we're going to be getting into is I posted out a clip um, yesterday about, you know, posting your favorite movie quote. And several people posted, and I'm going to read those off that towards the end of the show. Um, and we're going to kind of give our favorite movie quotes, and we're going to kind of go back and forth with movie quotes. Um, and we actually thought of something that might work for possibly random rant segment sometime in the future um, mm -hmm. while we were talking about this. So we might uh, incorporate some movie quote stuff later on. I'm not going to get into it because then, uh, we don't know if it's going to work or not. But we have a, a bunch of topics here, you know, between like uh, Xander Cage, seven to ten topics there. We're also going to talk about the new subscribers that came out uh, this past week, depending on how much time we have, because this is going to be a little bit longer of a Cinebrief show due to the fact we don't have a Cine Talk show coming out this week because we usually film on Sundays. And what's Sunday? The Oscars, baby. Yeah, the Oscars. All Oscar right, so, so white. What's that? Oh, sorry. What'd you say? Oscar so white. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I am, I'm looking forward to, but I'm also a little afraid of what Chris Rock's going to say. I'm not. I can't wait to hear what he has I, to say. I'm, I'm just afraid that it's going to get, because like at the Golden Globes, something like that would work really, really well. Like if he comes out and just starts lambasting them, the yeah. audience could just be crickets. They Everyone. could. It, they could turn on him. You know what? That's what they did to. That, that's what they did to Seth MacFarlane. There are there are a million reasons why I'm depressed that Chris Farley is 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 dead. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons, particularly this weekend, that really upset me is because I would love for him to have come out on stage, maybe during like one of Chris Rock's rants, and just done the whole thing from uh we uh no was it uh, Black Sheep where he just goes kill Whitey. <laughs> And then just leaves and then just like walks off the stage. I think that would have been great. And then you could have had like like guys in the background going, No <laughs> That would have been so much fun, man. That would have been pretty funny. Oh god, I miss Chris Farley. Okay. Yeah. Black Let's Sheep Black I'm Sheep sorry. might not be his best movie, but it is still a very funny it's movie. It's not his best, but it's it's great. Yeah. First one up is Deadline reports that Legendary Pictures has set Stephen DeKnight to direct Pacific Rim Two. That's not Guillermo del Toro. Um, nope. He has set to he's uh, Stephen DeKnight's been set to direct Pacific Rim two, but they did not give a release date. Do you have any uh, an immediate thoughts about this particular topic? Well, so I know Stephen DeKnight was the I believe the director for the Spartacus show on Showtime, right? Yeah, I, I think he hasn't done any movies at all. A little bit of he's a, just a TV director, right? So a little bit of a that's an edgy, literally cutthroat kind of show. Mm -hmm. Um, so that kind of leads me to believe he will bring a little something different maybe to this movie. Um, maybe it'll be a little darker, a little edgier. Um, hopefully maybe we'll get some actors to act. Maybe. <laughs> um, now see now, but now I wonder, I wonder though, if because he's kind of a rookie movie director, if he'll have a hard time pulling talent in, I don't, uh, do you happen to know how well the first movie did financially? Um, it was struggling, and then it made a little bit of money. So the movie cost quite a bit to make. I think it was yeah. like the, uh, the hundreds of millions of dollars. It might have been – I don't think it was quite 200, but I think it was like 160 or 70 or something Domestic? Like that. Um, I think overall, just overall, the money it made was like $420 million. So okay. it made <clears throat> it made probably somewhere along the lines of like – you could – as little as $20 million and as much as like – 80 million dollars for the studio which is not bad considering yeah. the investment but still yeah. it's not like you know deadpool which cost like 50 million dollars and has made the studio over 500 million dollars that's nuts that's the investment you want yes yes it is 
Um, but this, so you have an A-list actor like Ryan Reynolds, and you have to pay him big money. He it's paying off. Yeah, you know, if you had, if you want to put it in like the banking world, um, Pacific Rim was more of like putting your money in a CD, <laughs> right, and getting one point one percent return. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's about right. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I, I am. I like the idea of Stephen Denight coming in because, to be quite honest, I am not a big Guillermo del Toro fan. Like, I really enjoyed his Hellboy movies. Um, Mm -hmm. I think he has a good rapport with those actors. But everything else that he's done, I've never been overly impressed with. I just, I don't think he, I think he has a hard time getting his actors to actually give a good, really good performance. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Uh, I think when he gets really good actors, it's not as hard for him. Like I don't, I haven't seen Crimson, Crimson Peak. Have you? Had, did you have the chance to see that? I did. It was okay. It was I, okay. I, but did the actors do good? Did, were they? Did they give good performances? Yeah, Tom Hiddleston was uh, okay. Yeah. It, it just wasn't. I just didn't. I didn't love. I didn't really care for the story that much. Yeah. The, the dialogue was mm, all right. So but, I mean, I, it seems like he can give you a visually stunning movie, but he has a hard time really getting those actors to give the best performances. And that's kind of one of the director's main objectives. I would call I would call it very everything from the acting to the movie itself average. If I were to have given it, you know, a, a Cinebros rating, it probably would have been like a, a five point five or a six out of ten. Okay. So yeah, I mean that kind of leads me to what I was saying. Like I, I think Bringing in someone like Stephen Denight is kind of like you're still gonna have that cinematic quality, like the the huge kind of spectacle film where you have these monsters against uh, machines and they are yeah. just going toe to toe. However, yeah. they want to go about this next one, um, yeah. Maelstrom, whatever they want to call it. Mm-hmm. But um, <clears throat> I think bringing in a fresh director like this will give you. I think it can only go up from there. I think you're possibly going to get a better, well rounded, directed movie. It won't just be, yeah. you know, crazy monsters going against crazy machines. It'll yep. be a well rounded, well acted. <laughs> Uh, maybe not well acted, but a better acted movie that has a better storyline that kind of just flows better and will yep. will uh, you know hopefully all be better for it. So yeah. I, I know that Guillermo del Toro is still going to be on for um, producing the side of it, but he's not he's not going to be really uh, fully involved as far as directorial goes. So which is good in my opinion. Yep. So the next next topic up is we're just going to go over this real quick. This is going to be very very short. Sure. And that is because we've talked about the poster recently on the last CineTalk show. I believe Chad and I talked about it. Pete's Dragon teaser poster came out, but we also got a Pete's Dragon trailer. Yeah. What? What? Did, we're going to talk about this real quick. What were your uh, your quick thoughts on the Pete's Dragon trailer? It was brief. So it wasn't like I think it was like a minute and a half, maybe like a minute forty tops. Yep. So you didn't get, you didn't get like you know. There, there's a lot more that you can usually get in a two and a half minute trailer. Yeah. So I didn't feel completely fulfilled by this, but I think it was a teaser trailer. It it it, it did its job. Um, I was a big Pete's Dragon fan. Yeah. Uh, so and listen, everything lately that Disney has touched, especially in the past few years, has really seemed to turn to gold. Um. The only thing I'm a little concerned with, it's hard to tell because you really only got a couple of very short, quick glimpses of the dragon. Right. And I'm worried that the dragon might still look a little too campy. (laughs) But but other than that, it piqued my interest. I actually, I was trying to apply the Cinebro, um, with the Cinebro rating system to it. And I gave it a 6.0 out of 10 for the trailer. Oh, all right. (laughs) Excellent. All right. Well, when I was watching this, too many things. I hate when I'm watching something and all it does that comes to my mind is I think of other movies. So when mm-hmm. I'm watching this movie, the first thing that happened, I was like, why does this look so much like the Jungle Book trailer I just Yes! Saw? I know! Uh, and it's and like, it's except now like, we have a Mowgli. Did a I get trailer? <laughs> yeah. It, is this... Now, why am I watching a dirtier Mowgli? I don't understand. Yeah, but, <laughs> and then I also, when I start seeing the dragon, first thing, you know, that, that scene towards the end where the dragon, he... The, well, you... I don't know, Dirty Mowgli jumps off the uh, cliff. Yeah. And then you have the dragon swoop him up and come up. You have two movies that came out recently that you can kind of see that exact same thing. First one, which is, I think, is the one that kind of did it first most recently, which was How to Train Your Dragon. Yep. And then number two is another Disney movie, Big Hero 6. Oh, yeah. Yep. So you have that same kind of thing. I mean, obviously... 
uh, How to Train Your Dragon is a dragon, so it fits more. But Big Hero 6 did very similar things as well. Yeah. So I, I just, I feel like, stop going to the same well. Yeah. And give me a little bit more. And I mean, it looks so close to the Jungle Book trailer. I just, I was a little turned off by it. So I'd probably do something the same as you, like 6 out of 10. Yeah. wasn't anything great, but I'm intrigued. Not an opening weekend watch, that's for sure. Not as of yet. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to keep an eye, keep our eye on that for yep. future trailers. All right, next one up, next topic up is Ty Sheridan is to be the male lead in Ready Player One, which is to be directed by the King. We're not worthy. Uh, we're not worthy. Yeah. <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Um, he's kind of a big deal. Yeah, he's he's yeah he's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's done well for himself. Uh, so. I, I, you know, I'll start off with it. Like, to, to be to be honest, like I, I've watched a lot of movies, a ton of movies. Uh, I have seen Ty Sheridan in a few movies. Like, I've seen him in. I think he was in a movie with. I want to say he was in with Nick Cage. Um, I can't remember what movie it was. I think it came out last year. Um, but it was it was an okay movie at best. Nick Cage was trying to get back to his his better acting roots and not just be kind of a crazy animal. Um, but um, I think Ty Sheridan was in that. And Scout's Guide. He was in Scout's Guide. He was in Scout's Guide, and he was okay. He was the male lead, and he was okay. I When I see him, when I see his performances, I don't see, like, yes, this is the guy that is going to be the male lead of the future. Like, this is one of those guys, like the the like the yeah. Brad Pitts, like, you know, the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's. Like, I don't see his performances, and I'm like, oh, yes, he needs to be the lead of the next big, huge blockbuster franchise. He's and, not bad. He doesn't have that look. But... On top of that, I you know I guess on the counterpoint, I'm saying Steven Spielberg saw something in him. Steven Spielberg also saw something in like Shia LaBeouf and other things. Like, but and I think Shia LaBeouf has a very good acting talent. Um, he doesn't always portray that on the screen, but I think he is a very talented actor. Now Shia LaBeouf is the uh, for football fans is the Jeff George of acting. All kinds of crazy skills, unbelievable. Uh, you know everything you would want in that particular position, mm-hmm. uh, but a total disaster off the off the field, and 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 for his case, off the camera, and that's what that's what hurts him. But the guy, if he, if anyone thinks that Shia LaBeouf can't act, then they don't. Uh, he can act. Yeah, I he mean, can't. Did he you, just can't. He can't get about out of his own way personally. Did you see that movie um, that he was in with the tank? What was it called? Was it Fury? Fury. Yes. Uh, did you see that? I didn't see Fury. Um, Fury is a pretty good movie. I, th- I highly suggest watching it. It's pretty entertaining. Shia LaBeouf outacts everybody in that movie, that and he doesn't have, have the, he doesn't have a huge role, but he yeah. act- and he does that on several occasions. Yeah, um, he is a very talented actor. But I loved him in Disturbia. Yeah, well, he's he's good. He's really good. I mean, I just I think he's very talented, and because of his crazy antics, he gets overlooked a lot. But here up though, what's that? From here up, idiot. <laughs> yeah, is he? I mean, he is because, but he does get a lot of publicity for. I don't know. It's yeah. he's a, he's a whole other segment. Um, yeah, so Ty really Sheridan. Does. I mean, what do you think about Ty Sheridan being the male lead in Ready Player One? Yeah, I, uh, it's not a. He's not often a male lead, so this is going to be a step up for him big time. He's he's sort of been a, an ensemble guy. He was in. Uh, he will be in X Men Apocalypse as Cyclops, right? Yeah. Um, so this is actually his second movie that he's in with the title Apocalypse in it because he <laughs> scouts guide uh, to the zombie apocalypse. So this is a step up for him. And uh, but you're right. I'm gonna I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to the man Steven Spielberg because yep. if he sees something there, then you know this will be this will be a it'll be an interesting role for him. You know, I mean let's let's see what he can do. But yeah. listen, every young actor deserves a, a shot. Yeah. You know. I mean, the movie so that I was ta- the movie that I was talking about was Joe. Is that he's staring? Joe, yeah, you know, okay, that's right. Um, that, that was very good. I haven't seen Mud. I have it. I haven't seen Mud either. But I haven't seen it. And I've heard that he was really good. Now I think the guy's talented. I just don't see that stud of a person that can lead the carry the movie. But we'll see. I mean, he did a good job in Scout's Guide, but Scout's Guide was a bad movie. I mean, it wasn't. A, what, yeah. It was. A, it wasn't a good movie. <laughs> It wasn't good. No, it was some funny moments though. It wasn't terrible, but I was semi entertained throughout the whole thing. Yes, um, but he he did an okay job. So let's see. I mean, maybe he can. I mean, I guess in these big blockbusters too, especially a movie like this, you don't necessarily have to have 
the best male lead. I look forward to the adaptation of this movie because I know this was a New York Times bestseller book. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll be I. I I don't. I know a little bit about it, but I look forward to seeing how it's portrayed on the big screen. Yeah, I hear the book's amazing. I, yeah, I hear it's absolutely amazing. All right, we're gonna go on to the next topic, and the next topic up is Batman v Superman. And I am just, I, I kind of ironically, I guess, wearing a Superman shirt, considering how much I love Batman. I do love Superman too. Just, just so everybody knows out there, I don't hate Superman as much as I tell everybody how much Batman is going to whoop the crap out of Superman. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking to a diehard Superman fan right now. Um, but but Superman and Batman are my one too. So. Yes, I know. So it's in tough all of comic book lore, like Superman's pro, he's definitely in my top ten. He, I, I he might even be in my top five. Um, I do like him a lot. Uh, obviously, I, I like him quite a bit. I hope so. Um, and I really love the Man of Steel adaptation. So we'll, we'll see. But yep. uh, Batman v Superman, when it comes to DVD, it will be getting an R rated director's cut what do you think do you think this was influenced at all by deadpool i don't even care that it was influenced by deadpool and it may have been i am really excited for that okay really excited for that because what they've done since you know there was a time when when batman and superman were obviously much more campy uh yep. Uh, going back to, if you want to go Batman, all the way back to Adam West. Yes. Even in the the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, those were always a little, a Brandon, little more like that. Brandon Ruth. We have, yep, Brandon Ralph. We have seen the evolution of, you know, darker, edgier comic book films. So, and these are two characters who clearly by the trailers have a lot of vitriol towards each other. I would say Batman more so towards Superman than, yeah. than the opposite. Um, yeah, why not? Why not give us this? Yeah. Not to mention the fact, so brilliant to do it just for the DVD. That will automate. Even if this movie sucks, mm -hmm. people are going to go out and buy that DVD. So it's a brilliant move on that end. If they, so what if they lifted the idea from Deadpool? Who gives a crap. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's a good idea. Regardless, it's a good idea. I'm really, really excited for that. I will actually say I'm as excited as I am to see it in the theaters in a month. I'm probably more excited for that cut. Yeah, see, I'm really excited to see it as well. But the thing that I I think people are overlooking is the fact that Man of Steel was tiptoeing around that line of rated R. Close. It has a very, very dark tone. Um, there was obviously a lot of killing, a lot of destruction. Um, and it... Avengers was a PG-13 movie. It couldn't totally. it, it couldn't really go to the next level because of it just has that humor involved with it. Whereas Man of Steel yeah. was a much more serious dark tone. You have the Nolan trilogy, especially Batman Begins and um, The Dark Knight. Yeah. Those were very close to R-rated movies. They were very dark, very disturbing, very just obviously, you know, even Heath Ledger had a very difficult time yeah. coming out of that role. So I think with that being said, all of that right there, so that they are already close to that realm, now you're adding in Batman, who is a dark character to begin with, yeah. into a already dark world. I do, I do think they're going to have a little bit of humor in there every once in a while, like we've seen in the trailers. Like, a, like it's more of kind of like, uh, I want to say almost sarcasm and stuff like that that's kind of funny, but it's not really like laugh out loud, ha ha. Yeah. But yeah. you also have a director like Zack Snyder, who... Not, he did a very, very dark, which nobody has done before, a very, very dark live-action Superman movie. And then you also have his other ones, which is The Watchmen, another superhero movie that was rated R, and rightfully so. So yes. I think that to be say that it was influenced by uh, Deadpool, I don't think so. I think it, if it did, it was that 1% that threw them over the edge saying, yes, we should do a rated R director's yeah. cut. We were thinking yeah. about it anyway. This right. just said puts a stamp on it. I don't think yep. it really gave like the studio was like, oh, we gotta we gotta throw in some more F bombs to go and do a director's cut that's rated R. I think it's yeah. more like it yep. was probably more like, um, yeah, we were thinking about doing it anyway. And that we were just gonna come out with a director's cut and it wasn't gonna have a rating on it. Uh but or something along those lines it was gonna be like, you know, unrated, you know, director's cut. But I just don't think it was that heavily influenced, especially it's for a movie really, that's been in the can for a long time. It's going to really, really help DVD Blu-ray sales. I no, do. No, I think that. I think no, people no, are going to no. be very excited to see what 
else was yep. what else was happening to make yep. it that rated R. Which I don't think it would take that much. I think you could drop one f bomb, and that's what's going to throw it over. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm hoping that we don't get disappointed by it. You know, right? So like that's the one thing. See, if they're going to do that, they better go. I don't. They don't have to go over the top with it, but they better make it worthwhile because if they tease something like that again in the future and it sucks, whatever they do with this sucks. Yeah. They won't. You know, no one. It'll be like the boy who cried wolf. So yeah. I can't remember what director did, but a director came out and recently said that, oh my God, it was so funny. He was going to, oh, he said the Ant-Man director came out and said, Peyton, uh, is it Peyton Reed that did that? That sounds right. Um, I can't remember. I think so. Um, well, it, 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 he came out and said, the Ant-Man sequel is going to be NC-17. <laughs> Ant-Man ridiculous. and the Wasp is seven. That NC-17. is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, I thought that was pretty funny, though. All right, so we're going to talk about the next topic up, and the next topic up is Triple X Return of Xander Cage gets his release date. The release date is January 20th, 2017. Um, I'll start off with this a little bit. Um, So we have Xander Cage, which I still have not seen Triple X. I saw part of the one with uh, Ice Cube. But it getting its release date at January 20th, I think, is the biggest thing for this franchise because it is going to do kind of what Deadpool did, but on a lower scale. Like, it's going to probably be like a $50 million, $60 million budgeted movie. I can't imagine they're going to spend $150 million on a triple X movie. Um, I wouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, maybe maybe on the upwards of $80 million, but I have a feeling it's going to be in that more mid-range uh, yeah. uh, action movie. And... They are putting it out on January 20th, which I think is a smart decision because now you are already four weeks past Rogue One. So Rogue One has made the bulk of its money already. Yes. Yes. And I don't believe anything huge comes out within the next couple of weeks, which is where Triple X is going to make the bulk of its money. So I think you'll have Triple X come out, make some money, which is good for the studio, good for, you know, yeah. and Diesel and all that kind of stuff. They're just, And I'm also happy that we might get a decent movie to come out in January, which is nice when that happens because it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. So what, what do you thought? What are your, what are your initial thoughts about triple X? So I wrote down, I took, you know, I took some notes Ooh. on the show and, uh, when I got, you know, when I got the agenda and the outline and I, here's what I wrote next to triple X. I wrote X, X, X dash meh <laughs> M E H in case you wanted the spelling of that, man, that must've taken a long time. I just, <laughs> It was really. It was the quickest thing that I logged in my yeah. my notes. Oh, nice. Um, line item number five. Meh. Listen, uh, I didn't care for the first movie. Yeah. Um, there was a second one, right? Like with Ice Cube. Is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one I, I saw. Part of that one. Didn't even watch that. It was terrible. Don't. Yeah, terrible. Uh, zero interest in this movie at all. I don't. I uh, just. I don't know. Listen, I'm not. Listen, I don't expect Vin Diesel to to start playing Daniel Day Lewis roles or anything like that. But maybe he could branch out a little bit. Get he like was Groot, damn it! <laughs> Toughest line ever, boy. I, I bet you he still struggled with that script when he got it. He was probably like, "Oh man, there's a part where I have to say we, Arnold." <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I listen, I just I can't get excited for AAA. Right. It'll probably make money. I yep. feel like it's one of those it's it's one of those franchises that has a built-in audience. There will be some people who will go and see it. I won't be one of them. Yeah. Um but it, like I won't even watch it. That's not even a Redbox thing. That's not an HBO thing. I, I it's nothing. It's nothing to me. Well, for, for I, I will tell you, the most difficult part about this was last night. I was watching Legends of Tomorrow. I, I, I've watched the DC's, you know, Legends of Tomorrow. I have them all DVR. Don't No spoilers. I'm, I'm not going to spoil, I'm not gonna spoil so anything. Fine. I will not spoil anything for you. Okay. Um, I do not do that. I already had this argument with uh, Brad Neff a little bit a, a while ago on Facebook. Not really an argument. It was more like me just saying, I don't spoil things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so the biggest problem I had with this was typing in Triple X Return of Xander Cage into Google to go and get the uh, little photo that we got. And you'll never guess what kind of images came up on my Google <laughs> images. <laughs> I'm like, I wasn't even thinking. I'm like, I'm like looking at the TV. I look back. I'm, Whoa. <laughs> Is, will that make this show an R rating if you show any of them? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, then we'll, we'll pass. I was a pass. little shocked. I was a little shocked by that. Hated it. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, um, we're going to move on to the next one. Um, and the next one's kind of a little bit of a controversial topic. I'm not really sure why. It shouldn't uh, be. Um, Iron Fist is cast. That's right. Finn Jones, a white actor, to play a white lead, <laughs> is cast. The one, one of the questions that everybody's asking is, is Marvel scared to hire an Asian actor? <laughs> Yes, I know this sounds ridiculous when I ask this, because if you know anything, even if you just Google the character, Iron Fist. He's a you know, white dude. Um, he's a white dude. He, he's that's white who guy. he is. I don't know why people are freaking out. I, I've heard that the inspiration for Iron Fist was um, based off of Bruce Lee, which is awesome. But they didn't make him a white character in the comics. And he's kind of... He's kind of necessary almost to be a white dude. They could have made him Asian, but that would be more like just because and trying to change his background. I don't know. It's a little weird to me. It's this is like uh, is this what you call reverse racism when you've got people saying, "Oh, it should have been an Asian character even though their the character in the comics is a white guy?" Right. I, so to me, the ones who are actually doing the stereotyping are the ones who are criticizing the casting. Right. So doesn't that make them the racist and not Marvel? Also, Marvel turned Nick Fury into a black man. Yes. Nick Fury is a white character. Well, I think people are really having the biggest issue with, and, I th and this is kind of rightfully so, you do not see many Asians in any of these movies. Yeah. Um, and they took an Asian character, the ancient one, and yeah. made it a white character, a white actor, Tilda Swinton, yeah, uh, who is a phenomenal actress. She is amazing, but they took an Asian character that they could have used an Asian person for. I don't think. I think they what they're doing is what like Star Wars did with their lead role for um, John Boyega. They were yeah. like, this was initially supposed to be a white person, and they changed it. The problem with the ancient one is he's kind of supposed to be an Asian person. Like, yeah. that's kind of his background. And they made that Asian person white. Um, so I, yep. I think that that's where people are kind of having the issue. Is and that's fine. Asian. I mean, and if you had issue with that, that's fine. But this is a completely different character, yeah. completely different topic. So why are you dragging that into this? They, they almost want to, you know, make make it so like, well, you screwed this one up, so you got to give us this. It's like that's just, not how it works. <laughs> I just uh, listen. If if he if the comic book character had been Asian, I would have said all right. Yeah, I mean, it should be. Did you see any? Did you see any white people freaking out that Nick that Samuel L. Jackson was cast as Nick Fury? No, I'm sure some people did. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I thought I it was did. great. I, there are a lot of people freaking out about possible Idris Elba playing uh, James Bond. Me also have no problem. I with would that. love that. I would love that. He's major. He's crazy acting chops. Yes. Why would you not want him to play James Bond? And he's he's quite the presence. Like uh, I would yeah, be very oh intimidated God. by him. He's suave oh, too. Total look. Yeah. He's a he's a he's a, a lead actor in the making. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean like a big time. Yeah. He should easily he could, he could play that role easily. Got everything you want. Looks. A lot of idiots. A lot of idiots out there, Shane. Let's yeah. just let's just call a spade a spade, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of imbeciles out there, and they, they are out there. <laughs> they are. It's true. It's unfortunate, but uh, I think uh, I think it's kind of foolish. The whole the whole thing. All right, we're gonna move on to the next topic. Next topic up is for the Bry Man. Oh, this is where I get to go off. Uh, I, yes, I guess you get to go <laughs> off on awfulness. Um, uh, so Brian oh. was Brian recently saw a movie called Gods of Egypt. I wasn't able to go to the screener. I should. I think if I can get screeners for next week, especially Monday Tuesday, I can go. So yeah. I got I I got to be able to try and reach out. And see I'll what be I can there. Do. I'll be there. I think uh, for Monday for London has fallen. Yeah, I don't have that one yet. So I got to get that one. I get my hands on that. I I missed the opportunity uh, so far, but hopefully I'll get that. Brian saw Gods of Egypt. <laughs> his, sure his did. buddy Gerard Buckler, uh, <laughs> and uh, he also finally saw Krampus. So I I mean, he's gonna go over. He's gonna. I'm gonna give you three minutes total. Three minutes total. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll give you four because I know you really okay. enjoyed Gods of Egypt. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you four minutes. Laughter. I'm, I'm gonna give you four minutes to entertain me. Okay. All right. Ready? All right. Go. All right. L let me first give a synopsis on Gods of Egypt for those who who may have some interest in seeing it. Mm -hmm. The survival of mankind hangs in the balance when Set, played by Gerard Butler, the merciless god of darkness 
usurps Egypt's throne and plunges the prosperous empire into chaos and conflict. Hoping to save the world and rescue his true love, a defiant mortal named Beck, played by Brenton Thwaites, who knows if I butchered that pronunciation, <laughs> forms an unlikely alliance with the powerful god Horus, played by uh, Nicola Coster Waldau. <laughs> Their battle against Set and his henchmen takes them into the afterlife and across the heavens for an epic confrontation. The only thing epic about this movie was that description. <laughs> this movie was a $150 million budget cultural and social disaster of epic proportions. It was so bad that between yesterday and today, so I was looking it up online, yesterday it was 13% on Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes. It has since taken a two percentage point dive to 11%. Oof. I'm pretty sure I could go film some crap in my front yard, like with my iPhone camera and probably do better than an 11% Rotten Tomatoes. And the difference is I won't have to spend $150 million to get to that number. No. IMDB has it as a 5.7 out of 10. IGN.com a 4 out of 10. Those ratings are ridiculous because they are too high. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes pretty much has it right. Shane, I can't, I, I, <sighs> It's hard. It's hard for me to put this into words, although I think I'm doing it. Uh, this movie is a, a total disaster. The dialogue was awful. The story was ridiculous. It was, uh, it, it's one of those movies where everything, it, it's a perfect, it's a perfect shitstorm where everything comes together and it allows the actors to act below their actual talent level. Oof. Um, Gerard Butler was, was terrible. Um, Jeffrey Rush has a relatively decent sized role in it. That man has won an Oscar. It should be taken away from him. <laughs> um, I don't even know who the director was. I can't remember. But it was, dude, the whole thing was bad. The dialogue was such a joke because it was so like modern day ish dialogue yeah. in, you know, in, set in Egypt and they try and be funny and it's just, oh, what's God. up, homie? <laughs> after the movie, so I was with my brother in law and after the movie, the lights come on and I turned to him and I was like, what? What? Did we just? Why are we here? And I was. I think the first thing I looked at him and I just turned to him. And I was like, "Well, that was awful." <laughs> and, it was, like, and it was funny because before we got to the movie, he looked across the street before we got to the theater and he saw there was a bar there called World of Beer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Frank, we know this movie's probably going to be bad. Should we just go to World of Beer or should we go to this free movie?" And I'm like, "Ah, we came all this way. I, I guess we should just go to the movie. We should have gone to World of Beer." <laughs> So what you're saying is that Gods of Egypt was terrible, 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 crazy knucklehead of terrible. Yes, Charles. <laughs> thank you, Sir Charles. I, I believe you summed it up succinctly. <laughs> now, <sighs> see, and here's the problem. Gods of Egypt is one of those movies that they want you to like. They want you to actually take seriously. Mm -hmm. But when you see the finished product, you can't. This almost felt like a bunch of people were in there to like check out a raw cut and give feedback on it. Except the problem is this is the finished product. It's in the can. This is this is going to this movie is live now. It's out there for people to see. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's the worst movie ever because I still believe Cabin Fever takes that title. But this movie would probably be in my top 10 of unintentionally bad movies. <laughs> Let's move on to Krumpus. Wait, what did you get? What did you give it? Oh, I think I, I a 1.5 out of 10. A 1.5 out of 10. All right, hurry up yeah, with Krampus. Maybe for some interesting visuals. All right, you have. I'm going to give you an extra 30 seconds to talk about Krampus. 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 On the other hand, now, okay. So, if I if I may, I just want to also give a very quick synopsis on Krampus. While the holiday season represents the most magical time of year, an ancient European folklore warns of Krampus, a horned beast who punishes naughty children at Christmas time. I'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> this was a movie that had Adam Scott in it, Tony Collette. Um, a couple other people that you would probably recognize. Yep. Um, this movie was something that my wife and I had been trying to see forever. Basically, since Christmas, we just we couldn't get to the movie theater to see it. Fate conspired against us a number of different times. Finally saw it the other day, and it was everything we hoped it would be. It was awful, but hilarious, and we liked it. I would give it a 7.0 out of 10. In Excellent. fact... Rotten Tomatoes has it at 64%, IMDb at 6.7 out of 10, and 
that's pretty much what it is. But it was an awful movie that you expected to be awful. Right. Not like Gods of Egypt, which was a movie they tried to pretend was a decent movie, right. and it just came out like total garbage. Yeah, you don't spend $150 million on a No, bad and movie. I don't think the Krumpus budget was anywhere near that. Right. Krumpus was fun. It had some funny lines in it. And yeah, Krampus probably it, cost like fifteen million. It was generally enjoyable. There were little animated gingerbread men who were part of like Krampus's, you know, entourage. Of, I haven't seen it. Don't spoil it for me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> go see Krampus. You know, it, it comes out on April twenty sixth on DVD. By the way, um, Gods of Egypt. Uh, if you never see it, it's addition by subtraction. You will have had a more fulfilled life because you did not waste two hours and seven minutes on it. And that's all for me. All right. Okay. Well, we got those reviews out of the way for a couple of movies that came out uh, or a, while, a little while ago. And one came out yes. very recently. Um, <laughs> and uh, But we're going to move on to the next topic. Next topic up. James Mangold is to direct Disney's Captain Nemo. Now, Brian, had. A, I want to give you some time to think because you just used a lot of negative words on <laughs> one particular movie and I want you to kind of get out of that mindset and you want me to cut you want me to come down a little yeah come down a little breath. bit I don't want you to just start bashing everything just because you're in that mindset now of total awful cinema I can right. flip the switch though so. all, right. all right well I'm, 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 I'm gonna start off I'll start off okay yeah so I heard this this news about James Mangold to direct Captain Nemo now the first thing that popped in my mind was, Brian Singer just came out and said how he was going to be directing a 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea movie. I'm pretty sure Captain Nemo is a pretty big part in that. Pretty big. <laughs> um, and so I was, I was, I'm a little taken aback by that. But then I'm thinking, I'm like, is Captain Nemo, the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, is that going to be done by Fox? And this is Disney's movie. So now I'm thinking back, I'm like, well, James Mangold directed for Fox the Wolverine origins. Now I might be really overthinking this, but I'm like, maybe Disney took, and, and there was a, there was talks that James Mangold and Fox really did not get along. They were butting heads. Fox made their movie. Mangold never got to make his movie. That's why we got the atrocity. That was the X-Men Wolverine origins. So now does Brian Singer say how I'm coming out? I'm going to direct my 20,000 leagues under the sea movie. And Disney's like, well, we're going to take Fox's director that really hated you guys that hates you guys and does not want to work with you anymore. And we're going to take him and do a Captain Nemo movie. Mm -hmm. I, I, thought, I found that there was a little interesting kind of behind the scenes, possible behind the scenes, like conflict going on um, because of all that. I don't know, but that's just my rumor kind of mind. When, that's what popped into my mind when I started thinking about all this. And which movie would I rather see? Even though it's Disney and I love Disney. I kind of would rather see Brian Singer's adaptation. Um, and James Mangold hasn't given a ton of great movies. Um, so that has me a little worried too, but you have Disney helping him out. Yeah. So that is always a good thing. Um, what did you think? That's all that went through my mind. I'm, I'm, I was a little, I thought it was very interesting, the person that they chose to direct the movie, especially after Brian Singer said that he's going to be tackling that franchise. What did you think? Uh, I was actually excited to hear about it. Um, this was actually the first thing that popped into my head was, God, what's taken Disney so long to get this this movie greenlighted and, right. and, and you know, moving along? Yes. Um, I was a big 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea fan. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think a lot of people in our generation were. Yeah. Um, so, and again, and I, I hate to be... A Disney shill these days, but they, I mean, they're kind of like Apple. They they really they struggle to do wrong in my eyes, um, especially lately. I mean, Disney's just been such high quality. Disney people don't realize this. They are probably for three years in a row going to have the best animated. I know this is not an animated feature, but they're probably going to win for three years in a row best animated feature at the Oscars. Because yeah. if Inside Out loses to any of those other movies, yeah. Call the police because we need an investigation. Right. Because Inside Out was great. <laughs> and the two movies, Frozen and uh, Big Hero 6, that won in the past two years respectively, uh -huh. earned every bit of that. So I'm just like, I'm so on the Disney train right now. Yeah. And the only way I'm getting off is if they really screw something up. There is a potential to screw this movie up big time. Yeah. 
Um, I don't have the directorial concerns. I, I think no. As I, you know what? As, Actually, I just looked at his IMDb, and I, I, I take everything back as far as him not being a great. He did Three Ten to Yuma, which is amazing. Walk the yeah, Line, amazing. Cool. And I actually really enjoyed Night and Day. Um, so I take that back. Wolverine, obviously, he had a bad relationship with Fox, and something went awry there. Um, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of his movies, and they are good. I haven't seen Girl Interrupted, but I heard it's pretty good. Kate and Leopold, he must not just not do well with. <laughs> With, with Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bottom line, I am very much looking forward to that. I don't care how many versions of any or iterations of 20,000 League Under the Sea movies come out. I'd watch all of them. Yeah. All right. So you're even though he has the, a possibility of doing this movie, which there is no – they don't have on his page – um, when that movie is going to be? That's what I went to go look for. I went to go see when it was going to be shooting because I know that Brian Singer's Twenty Thousand Leagues is starting to shoot this coming fall. Yeah. Um, so I, I I dislike when you see two similar movies coming out in a very short period of time. Um, yeah. Like we're going to get two Jungle Book movies. We're getting John Favreau's this year, and next year we're getting um, Andy Serkis's uh, Jungle Book. And I think they're yeah. going to be two totally different movies, but we just saw one. So you need need a little bit of time to kind of wash Digest. it. Yeah, wash it away, you know, like get cuz yeah, you don't want to go into it and being like the whole movie comparing it to the other one that just came out a year ago. That's yeah. kind of unfortunate for the for the movie, you know. Next topic up is director Roy Lee has some big plans for Warner Bros upcoming Dungeon and Dungeon and Dragons reboot film, including branching out into not just multiple films but possibly multiple worlds this is what he said i think it will really be moving forward quickly and i don't anticipate it not getting greenlit this year mostly because warner bros has dc now and lego and the harry potter universe that's being cultivated as their franchises lee told collider i believe they i believe they see dungeon and dragons as something that could be cultivated as multiverse movie where there will be will there be spin-offs from the first movie being in forgotten realms and subsequent movies being in different worlds what are your thoughts about the dungeons and dragons movie that's going to be possibly greenlit maybe later this year Dungeons and Dragons was interesting. It was one of those games that was very much right in uh, in terms of when I was growing up, uh, right there at the forefront. It yeah. was very popular. I mean, that was absolutely uh, a game from my youthful generation. Never played it. Mm-hmm. Didn't really have a lot of interest in it. Although the the idea and the concept of it, I like, and I think it will. I think it will translate pretty well to the big screen. It I should. also know that that game has a massive following. I mean, it's still relevant now. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not I as big like, as it used to be. I think no. to, be, to be honest, I do think that when they talk about it on Big Bang Theory, I think that yeah. brings it a little bit into the pop culture world and you're yeah, going to get does. some more fans. Um, sure, anything that Sheldon mentions, he can just, you know, Sheldon could just bring stuff back. <laughs> I'm sure there's tons of people who love flags now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my, well, I'm one of them. <laughs> I would love to be a guest on Sheldon's Flag podcast. <laughs> Fun with flags. Especially like if he did a Revolutionary War edition, I'd be all over that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I would so nerd out on on Sheldon's podcast. Um, <laughs> it'd be great. I, I hope they could do a segment someday where they could have like a guest like a, like they could guest cast somebody. That <laughs> a legit just, guest. It'd be I'd be that guest. I'd be right in, in between him and Amy. <laughs> You'd be so happy. Oh my god. I'd be I would just be like I'd be so nervous I'd be so happy. Yeah, I, I as far as the Dungeons and Dragons reboot film, I I'm intrigued with it. I really want to see something like this come out. I mean, it's a another big spectacle film that's going to be it's not going to be just, you know, small scale. I mean, there the, the one of the things that they had said was that it's going to be kind of like um Gu- Guardians of the Galaxy meets Lord of the Rings meets Lord of the Rings like the Tolkien Tolkien movies and those two I'm like that's amazing that's a great idea because we haven't gotten something like that done I mean we have obviously Guarded the Galaxy is very cool and awesome and it's built it's basically made in space which is a very vast place but it didn't feel like a grand epic movie um, Lord of, yeah. Lord of the Rings felt like a larger scale than Guardians of the Galaxy, and those movies are phenomenal. That might be the greatest trilogy of all time. It's it's definitely in probably most people's top five trilogies, you know if not funny, top, top two. And I don't want to go off too much on a tangent here, but I I thought 
after watching those first three that my favorite of of any of the movies, any of those, including The Hobbit, the the three in The Hobbit, uh, I thought Two Towers was like one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. And then I saw Battle of the Five Armies from The Hobbit, and I was like, that is now of the six Lord of the Rings Hobbit movies. That is by like by far my favorite. Wow. And the reason why is it comes down to that last the last forty five minutes of the the fight the fight. The uh, the two there were two basically fight scenes going on there that kind of but I'm glad to hear that Dungeons and Dragons is is going for that that Guardians of the Galaxy Lord of the Rings thing. Yeah. To me, that's one of those movies. If they had made it it the, in the height of the toys or the game's popularity, yeah. probably would have been bad and cheesy. Yeah. They have a chance to do it justice. Yeah. Now they can do campy on purpose well. Yes. Like right. what they did with the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Yep. Yep. Like it was campy, but still kind of serious and a lot of fun. I'd go, you know what? I actually would, I probably would enjoy going to see it for the first time because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have any expectations of it in terms of like, so I wasn't a, a Dungeons and Dragons, you know, enthusiast. So I think I would go into it very open-minded and be like, hey, I'm just hoping for an entertaining flick here. Right. Yeah. I'm, I am totally with you on that. Like that's... I'm very interested in this movie. I want to see it. I want to, I want them to go in this direction. I think it could do yeah. well, and I would love to see other worlds. I mean, I think that one of the things that they'll greenlight it. I think if you see w World of Warcraft do well, yeah, I think then you'll see this be green light, green lit within a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, um, if not hours, like after you still, night. you still have a built in. The, you know, mid thirties to mid forties audience there. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a great sweet spot. So, absolutely. All right, we're gonna move on, and we're gonna go on to something that I posted just the other day. Yes. And <laughs> I um, I <laughs> it's about movie quotes. So this is what I posted on the Cinebros page the other day. What is your favorite movie quote, or the quote you say most often? Well, I posted it out there, and I got several responses, and the, I'm gonna I'm gonna read through them real quick. And, uh, you know, some people didn't post what the quote was from, but they okay. posted them. I'm sure we can figure it out. So I said, Steve Zumbo said, so I... <laughs> oh, Steve Zumbo! <laughs> yeah, yes. He's my so, friend. He said, so I got that going for me, which is nice. That's obviously from Caddyshack. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Good. When he's awesome. got total unconsciousness, or no, total consciousness, right? When he's at, when he's at death. Yeah. So um, they have that. Um, Matt Pizarro, who is a friend of mine. He says this, he said, even when I don't have a bad feeling, he says this anyway, which is, I have a bad feeling about this, which is obviously from Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then you have uh, Ryan Perenio. He said, my roommate said they were going to get me a CB radio so I could talk to the other car beds. I don't even know what that's from. I don't know what that is either. Yeah, I have no idea. I need to look that up. That sounds amazing. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Mike, cool. Mike Munger says... Did we just become best friends? Uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, stepbrothers. <laughs> do you want to do karate in the garage? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. That's become a classic yes. quote. Um, Corey Williams says, I'm the best there is at what I do. Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. yeah. I, love, I love Wolverine. Um, Matt Lipsy. This is kind of funny. Matt Lipsy writes, I often find myself quoting Luke Skywalker from episode seven. <laughs> That's good. good. That's good. Uh, so then he says, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> "You like really that?" <laughs> it's like it's hitting me in waves. Yeah. Like how funny that is. <laughs> Rob Very good. Rob Bush writes. He posted a meme about it too. From uh, you, uh, let's see if you can get this. All right. Seems like you've missed a few days of work. I wouldn't say I've been missing it. I wouldn't say I've been missing a Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Space. Yes. Very, very nice. That's an extremely quotable movie. Yes, it is. It is extremely yeah. quotable. Uh, we have uh, Rochelle Norland, who says it's going to be a place where only things you want to have happen w would happen. Carol from Where the Wild Things Are. Oh, I would not have gotten that. Me neither. I haven't seen that movie, but I've uh, seen it actually, but I still wouldn't have gotten it. Yeah, that's that. That's a uh, that. That's one of those quotes that means really something deep to you, but yeah, it would be tough to kind of pick up on. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything that deep. Another friend of mine posts, Alan Stanley. It ain't cool being a jab turkey so close to Thanksgiving. Barry White looking guy in trading places. <laughs> oh, that's pretty great. <laughs> that is pretty great. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, 
All right, so Richard Armstrong writes, The Boogeyman is real, and you found him. I'm assuming that's from John Wick. Yeah, I would, yeah. I would, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think so. Because John Wick is amazing, and that's only yes. one I can really remember. Something like that being said. So, John Wick? We'll yeah, John Wick. I would, a consensus I would have to say that that's John Wick, yeah. So, my mother, and more, posts, I hate Brian. I'm just kidding. Did you? Wow. Uh, yeah. That's a little running joke we have going. <laughs> Does she hate me? No. <laughs> she wrote, say hello to my little friend. Awesome. That was her quote. Uh, that's, my, there. that's my father's favorite movie. Okay. Um, and then Michael Nicholas writes, you're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me, Small. Oh, there, that's, it's good that we got a Sandlot quote in there. Yes, absolutely. So we got a bunch of quotes. Um, oh, now we're going to give some of our favorite quotes. So uh, we're going to go back and forth, We're going right? to go back and forth here. And, okay. um, I'm excited about this. I, I wish I had, had more time to prepare for this because this could be a whole show. Oh, my gosh, yeah. In fact, it needs to be a whole show at some point. <laughs> a short show. A short show. <laughs> all well. right, so we're going to go through this, all right? <laughs> yeah. What is your... Number one, which one? Do, which quote do you say most often on any given day? <laughs> um, so it's kind of funny. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh, it was hard for me to 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 do that. So I kind of had like a five, four, three, two, one, and then I had a bonus section, which of course we'll talk about. Yeah. Uh, but I would actually say, even though I wouldn't have it as my favorite. If it would sort of to apply to that, I say this one a lot. Yep. And actually, I say it with like a lot of coworkers and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, you f***ed up. You trusted us. <laughs> Tim Matheson as Otter in Animal House. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Feel free to bleep if you have to. Uh, but... Yeah, it would be a little bark noise. Yep. Um, uh, mine, uh, the one I, f- I find myself, <clears throat> I find myself quoting Ace Ventura quite often. Why not? <laughs> and but it's not the one that people like most. Um, I find myself quoting the "When Nature Calls." That uh, is my favorite Ace Ventura movie. Um, there's something on the wings. Something. That is not my quote, but that okay. is one of them. Um, the one that I constantly say to myself, and I say this to my kids a lot. I find them doing something, and they're like, "Dad, watch me!" And I look at them and I go, "You're good. With my help, you could be the best." <laughs> Like, you know, when he does the earthquake test, good, you're good. good. With my help, you could be the best. Very good. I, I say that all the time. All the time. Okay. All right. What's your next one? All right. So I'm going to go, I'm going to try and go back from like five down now. So this was sort of my number five. And this is a, a, a very, very brief back, uh, back and forth exchange mm-hmm. from my all time favorite movie, which you know is? Uh, uh, Fugitive. Yes. <laughs> Tommy Lee jo- um, Harrison Ford, before he's about to jump uh, into the water, yeah. I didn't kill my wife. To which Tommy Lee Jones says, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Actually, one of the best scenes in, um, in uh, The Fugitive is... After they, there was that scene where that where Tommy Lee Jones's team, the Marshals, raid that house. Mm-hmm. Actually, it didn't it didn't really have anything to do with the uh, the story of trying to find Richard Kimball. It was just like they were doing their job, and they raid that house. And there's that one woman, like he shoots the guy, and that woman is just screaming, going nuts, and he just points at her, shut up, <laughs> and she stops. <laughs> It was so great. He's an intimidating so presence. Um, <clears throat> I'll actually go the the Harrison Ford route. Something that I also say. Uh, quite often is I hope this isn't I hope I don't have this one too get off my plane oh okay alright alright get off <laughs> I my plane I say that I say that quite often um, really yeah do you say it when you're on a plane and there's just like random sitting next to you no no I'll just say it randomly like I won't necessarily say get off my plane but I'll be like get off my lap get off my yes. kid <laughs> move it Isla <laughs> Uh, but I'll say it in the tone of uh, get off my plane. But I do reference that quite often. What's your next one? Okay. You're going to have to do some bleeping here. And I'm even going to try and give you my crappy um, imitation accent of it. <clears throat> and I'll see if you – I know you'll get this movie. Your best. Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and f*** 
The prom queen. The rock. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the rock. And that's when Nicholas Ca- Nicholas Cage says, "I married the prom queen." I, I married the prom queen. Yeah. Which I also. Oh no no. He says, um, I forgot what her name was, but he says her name is the prom was the prom queen. Yeah. I, Laura it might have been Laura. Laura I, was the prom queen or something like that. I also married the prom queen. Yes, you did. I know. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, some other ones that I say quite often are, you can dodge a wrench, but you can, if you can, <laughs> you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Yeah, every time I pick up a wrench, I will tend to say that. That's great. <laughs> Kim, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> yes, that's another good one. Oh, that's good. Good. All right, okay. what's your next one? You know I had to pull one from Jaws, and this was, oh, God, this was, like, impossible for me because I can quote the entire movie. Um, But I I have to go with, and I think I've told you this, in all of cinema, my favorite still shot, my favorite still frame ever in a movie is, and I hope you can pull this and, and put it up on the screen, is when, right at the end, when Roy Scheider climbs up the, the yes and he, it's going down and you see that the camera is from behind the boat mm-hmm. the boat is like this and the, sh- the the shark fin is coming towards him right you see he's got the gun but it's like a distant shot um and he just said smiled you son of a <laughs> <laughs> i just love it i just i love that quote it was so perfect the drama of that scene the build up he's down to like probably his last bullet mm-hmm and he hits the tank, and it's so great. But um, just the whole. another yeah. quote that I find myself saying quite often is when I'm playing golf, "Somebody's closer." Good. <laughs> that's a good one. That applies to a lot of stuff. Yes, yes, it does. You don't even need golf for that. Yeah, but that, that's something that I will find myself saying quite often. I mean, I quote. I, I quote that and Tin Cup all the time while playing golf. Yeah, Tin Cup, okay. I always talk about how I'm going to use nothing but a 7-iron. All right. <laughs> Why? I'll give you my – this is – I would I don't even know if this is my number one quote of all time. I, I, I put it number one. I'm going to actually see if you can guess this. You should be able to. It's not the years, honey. It's the mileage. Uh, is, what is that from? That is from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, my lord. That was that was Harrison Ford. Yeah, that's yeah. He's amazing. I I haven't watched Raiders of the Lost Ark in such a long time. I've been but, I've been thinking about doing another uh, little splurge and just watch them all again. I mean, my favorite is uh, the him and Sean Connery in the uh, the Last Crusade. I love that movie. That's my favorite yeah. one. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been keep, I keep meaning to say I gotta watch those again. See if I I want to watch them to see if Cameron can watch them. It's um, I don't know if you I don't know if you remember the, the but the specific scene is great. It's when um, it's when they they get aboard the boat him and Marion, and uh, she's he had really he had really gone through hell. He was beaten up. She was trying to take care of him like yeah. they were down in that in that room in the boat, and that's where he said it. You know, but it was so great because he was just so like. It's almost, it almost seems like it was one of those lines that he ad libbed. He probably didn't, but yeah. I'm sure it was part of the script. But but it was just the you know he was in pain. He's laying down and she's tending to him, and he's like, "It's not the years, honey. It's the mileage." Yeah. It's, but it's, that's a great quote, though. It is. That is a good one. Um, there's. I'm gonna ram. I'm gonna run through three, real quick, all from the same movie. Okay. And it's because it's a movie that I love. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. Okay. The first. <laughs> I ha- I, and I say these not often. One of them I say a lot. And the one that I say a lot, you shut your mouth when you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I say that one a lot. Another one I say, and I will say this um, with my mom when I'm at her house. Um, I'll, 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 I kind of, I usually bleep, at, bleep myself. I go, Mom, the meatloaf. <laughs> good, good. And then I'll say, I never know what she's doing back there. What is she doing? <laughs> That's awesome. So I'll say that from time to time, especially when I'm with my siblings. Um, another one that I, that I say, and I say this one just uh, randomly, when, especially when I'm with one of my friends, and I, I go, it was my first Asian! <laughs> I just love that. 
<laughs> That's when Vince Vaughn screams that out. He's at the party. And then, uh, you know, uh, you have Isla Fisher and um, Christopher Walken. They both stop and they, like, look over like, what the heck just happened? And they, they start going, lock it up. You lock it up. You lock it up. You lock it up. No. <laughs> Nice. Uh, I got a few quick. I got a few quickies I can throw in there too before I get to my bonus edition okay. part. I love just the way it was said. Um, this was by Doctor Loomis in Halloween. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. Ooh, that quote. It's yeah. just so dark. That's a good one. This is one that I do use a lot, even though I would never call it one of my favorites. But in uh, Dark Knight Rises, yeah. Do you remember when they bring um, – because I say this to my kids like all the time. Like sometimes when they walk in the room or like if they're – like if I'm in my room and like I'm working out or something or yeah. if I'm just in there and the kids walk in the room, I'll go like this. I'll go, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> remember when they bring Commissioner Gordon down into the, down into the sewers? Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> and you brought him down here? <laughs> panicked <laughs> and you cost them lives <laughs> don't get me started on Bane oh my god Bane is unfortunately highly quotable yeah <laughs> um, alright do you want me to do <laughs> for all the wrong reasons do you want me to do my bonus edition sure I, bonus I have several Star too. Wars edition I, I have several too so we can we can do some more alright all I'm gonna do my bonus Star Wars edition five my five favorite quotes from Star Wars lore okay right off the bat do or do not there is no try <laughs> nice I like that one I like that it's good in my experience, there is no such thing as luck. Mm. That is a great everyday quote. Yes. That you could use. Yes. You might not even know that that was an Obi Wan Kenobi quote because it's just so. He's it's just, so. It, it's just very natural. Right. It's a trap. <laughs> I say that one quite often on, on Facebook. Time. I say that all the time. I say that on Facebook all the time. Uh, this is another good one that could be used in everyday. Never tell me the odds. Yeah, that's a good one too. That's a good um, one too. And of course, I find your lack of faith disturbing. Yes, that's a good one. All right, uh, one a couple of ones that I have, I have from one of my another one of my favorite comedies of all time, and that is Monty Python: The Holy Grail. Um, the first one I like to say every once in a while is me. <laughs> <laughs> Another one I like to say is quoting the French taunter. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. <laughs> oh, my God. Good. Uh, I fart in your gentle direction. <laughs> yes, that's a great one. That's my favorite that's one. one. That's my favorite line. Um, you, have the, you have none shall pass where he's like, what are you going to do? Bleed on me? <laughs> <laughs> your arm's oh. off. No, it's not. <laughs> Can I do a little uh, for uh, a little tribute for my brother-in-law who I love so much? Um, mm -hmm. I want to do I want to do a, a little a few wedding singer quotes. Ooh, okay. Because we love the wedding singer. Wedding it's singer one of our favorite good. movies to quote back and forth. Mm -hmm. They were cones. <laughs> <laughs> Your sister and I, when we were younger, we were very adventurous. She used to do this thing with my nipples. All right, go out already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know what I said, but I said something. <laughs> oh, I got water all over myself. <laughs> the wedding singer is is just. Oh my god! You better get in there. They're turning on George. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want to hurt me? And then I love the scene where they go to. <laughs> I don't know why this. I don't know why this makes me laugh every time I see it. Where they go to Julia's house for the first time, uh -huh. and um, and they're meeting. They're meeting. You know, her and the and her fiance there. And uh, what's uh, the guy? The guy who was um, the guy who was the limo driver. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his one of one of Sandler's many buddies who's always in his movies. Yeah, yeah. He's got like he's got the he Michael was a Jackson. boy. He's got yes. He's got the Michael Jackson coat on, and he's got the silver glove on, and yeah. he's like. He's like, how do I look? He's like, I don't know, man. Lose that glove. You look nuts. <laughs> Just the way he says it. <laughs> hey, say hi to your brother Tito for me. Oh, man. <laughs> it's Good such Lord. a great movie, man. It is a funny movie. It's the cones! <laughs> <laughs> Those could have been people at her wedding. Those could have been guests at her wedding. Uh, yeah. That's a good Robbie, movie. Robbie, I'm never going to marry you. Once again, information that would have been useful to me yesterday. <laughs> I'm pretty sure none of us will ever find love. 
you know, like the the mutants at table nine. <laughs> yes, we we quote that quite often. You started that with using that quote. That, that one, yeah, I, I do love the mutants at table nine quote. Yes, we, we and you that can't quote. use that in real life. Just go to a mall, <laughs> and people watch. You can find the mutants at table nine. They're out there. Yeah. Oh, everywhere. Oh, and then just one random one that popped into my mind from um, Hot Shots Part Two. Oh, this was a Saddam Hussein quote. I will kill you until you die from it. <laughs> I think we we'll go out on that note. Yeah, I, I I will I will go with a couple a couple from uh, another great uh, just a guy who is had some he was a great secondary character in a lot of these movies. Will Ferrell in old school. We're going streaking. You got Snoop a loop. You have you're my boy Blue. You're my boy. That, you're that, my boy. You. <laughs> You have that one, you have that. And then you also have when he was obviously mom the meatloaf and all that kind of stuff. But you have it when he first came down the stairs and he sees Owen Wilson and he goes, he sees him and he goes, I almost nunchucked you. You don't even know. Or he's like, you don't even even know. (laughs) Yes, I love it. You didn't even, you don't even realize. (laughs) Something along those lines. So great. (coughs) So great. Yeah, there's so many great quotes. I mean, I could go on and on. Like, I mean, when I'm, usually when I park, I'm always parking. It's like, like a glove. <laughs> like I pull oh, in. That's awesome. I say that quite often with the kids in the car, but Very they don't good. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I so, think yeah. your brain is made of a thin candy shell. Yeah, Shut up, Richard. Yeah, that's a great one too. Not so much here, not so much here but right here. I knew it. <laughs> you look like a Helen. Helen, let me tell you why I suck as a salesman. <laughs> See this little piece of bread as my sale. And I caress it. And I poke it. You're naughty. You're a naughty pet. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. We will go out on if that we note. kick the door to Tommy Boy down, uh, it's going to get ugly. We're going to go out on that note. Yeah. Um, a, yeah thank yeah. you. Thank you, everyone, for watching the show today. Um, we do have a few subscribers. I'm just going to run down them real quick. Um, uh, the last, the first one that came on, let's see. Oh, oh, five days ago was Blu ray Dan. He subscribed uh, several days ago. We actually subscribed to him too. He's actually got a pretty good channel uh, over on Facebook. Right? He does a lot of opening. He, he opens like Blu rays, talks about them, and all that kind of stuff. He has he got a little good little channel over there. The Although next it, one. In what? 10 years, he's going to need to change his name to like Download Dan or Streaming Dan yeah, or something right. like that. You know, Although, maybe, gonna... maybe he'll be like, he'll do, he'll get all the, you know, the, the random DVDs, he'll find them, he'll search for yes. them all over. He'll be scouring for them. Maybe he could be 4K Dan or UHD Dan. Or <laughs> UH Dan, Ultra High Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we have another one that's got a fantastic name. That's Mr. Radioactive Panda. It's really cool. That is an interesting name. It's a, it sounds like it should be like a like a like a value item on a Chinese menu or something. I, I feel like that he's like should be like a character on uh, on the Cartoon Network. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that sounds like its own show. Yeah, um, we have another woman up. Her name is uh, Leah Hather Reviews. She obviously must do some reviews, movies, TVs. I don't know. Um, I'll have to check out her cha- channel and see what's all about. She's got she got a decent amount of subscribers over at, over three sixty. So that's pretty sweet. Nice. Uh, we have <laughs> a, a, another one called Fruit. Cinema Scumbags. It's very interesting. They don't sound like nice people. Um, they, they, here, I'll read their little thing off there. A comedic R-rated discussion of film-related topics. We talk about recent movie news, give a rundown of theatrical and home releases, and then it goes on and on and on. So obviously, they must be, they're probably nicer than they seem, but they just like the name Scumbag. I guess. It's a cool word. I actually use it a lot. Yeah. Like when I just start, describe Tom Brady or Osama Bin Laden, that's usually a word that I go to. <laughs> Those two people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably use it more when I'm talking about Tom Brady, actually. <laughs> it's a great word for him. I feel like it was invented for him, oh except the word came out a long time ago. So, uh, All right. One day ago, Randy Smith. Yeah, does that regular make you Randy? Randy? Regular Randy. Does that make you horny, baby? Thank you, Randall. Uh, so thank you all for sub- uh, subscribing to the show. We really appreciate it. So we're going to be signing off. Where can people find you on the Twitter and internet worst first? Verse world? Well, let's, well, we can start with Facebook. Facebook.com slash Hollywood Brian. Can, can you do it in Bane's voice? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Should I, should I cut? <laughs> yes. Oh, you can find me on Facebook first. 
on facebook.com slash Hollywood Brian. If you want to look for me on Instagram, it's BKC8377. Why would he want to shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane? <laughs> oh, and then you can find me on Twitter at the underscore bry underscore man. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> you can find me pretty much everywhere at the Cinebros. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, and Movie Pilot. You can also find me on YouTube at the Movie House Maniacs. You can find both of us there. Um, we hope you guys had a good time watching our show today, and we will talk to you guys. Hope that you guys have a fun time at the movies this weekend. You guys have fun not watching Gods of Egypt. <laughs> we will. Uh, I, I, if you want, next time I can maybe provide a little. If you don't go, we can pro provide a little synopsis on London Has Fallen. Yeah. Although I don't think we need a synopsis. I think we, I think we just need a even. Review. We need Gerard desperately to bounce back here. Yes. We from, no matter no matter what no matter what we can get something done because if I if I see London has fallen, I'll do my review. But we can still hear what you have to say about it. Yeah, let, this is a this is a seminal week in Gerard Butler's career because it's already an epic disaster with Gods of Egypt. He needs London has fallen to just be the movie that it should be. Yep so that he can maybe get himself like so let's say like here's the average plane we need him just to get here because wow. right now he's... looks like you might be cupping something <laughs> on that note <laughs> we will yeah. be signing off and we hope you guys had a good time watching the show remember to subscribe to us at youtube.com slash the movie house maniacs and we will see you guys at the movies soon we hope <laughs> peace oh if you watch the show on YouTube, please click that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching. <laughs>